Hey there everyone, my name is Eduardo Arroyo, but you can call me Ed. And today we are here exploring Hayden Ashbury in San Francisco, California. The Hayden Ashbury district is a very popular place to visit here in the city. This is because this place has very rich history and many cool places to visit. It was made famous by the hippie movement of the 1960s when people from all across the US would come here to find like-minded people who rejected mainstream culture. This neighborhood was immortalized in history by the world famous event, the Summer of Love. Today, this place is very different than what it used to be, but it pays tribute to the 60s by trying to preserve some of the vibe and the aesthetic that made this place so popular. The main goal of this video is very simple. Learn a little bit about the history of this place, take a walk around the neighborhood and look at the different shops and attractions, and overall just enjoy this beautiful day in the city. So if you're interested, come with me. So before we start exploring this neighborhood, I would like to share with you guys a little bit about the history of this place. By the mid 1960s, Hayden Ashbury had become the center of the universe for hippie counterculture. During that time, this place became the home of many revolutionary movements, spiritual groups, famous musicians, and ideals that pushed the boundaries of the hippie movement that it all originated from. Activities here were reported nationwide, which attracted the attention of many people, especially young ones from all across the country. This place was sought after by people who wanted to create a community based around the counterculture values and ideals that were predicated by the hippie movement. Some of which included anti-capitalism, anti-war, alternative religions and spirituality, psychedelic drugs, and music. This mindset was perfectly embodied by a group who call themselves the Diggers. This was an anarchist group who believed in free society and the good in human nature. With the help of volunteers and public donations, this group created different institutions and programs to help the hippie community. One of the institutions they created were the free medical clinics where drug experts and doctors would volunteer to offer free healthcare services to those who needed it most. Free healthcare services were provided to homeless, intoxicated individuals, and also people dealing with STDs. I am actually standing right in front of the plaque as you can see right there uh, behind me um, that commemorates this uh, institution that still provides services till this day. So there it says Hayden Ashbury Free Medical Clinic and over here this is kind of like the motto of the organization it says healthcare is a right not a privilege and it's just uh, mentioned some of like the important people that were involved in this and just around the corner I'm gonna go ahead and show you the building where they continue to provide these services today just like I told you guys this is the building where they continue to provide services don't even ask me how these work thankfully I've never had to use one of these before but if I could take a guess it would be that they provide services to the community here in Hayden Ashbury and in San Francisco as a whole this group would also organize people to cook meals in their home and bring them out to share with the community especially those people who needed it the most another institution that was set up by the diggers were a series of stores dubbed the free stores where anyone and everyone could come and pick up some free items including furniture, clothes, or other things. Right now I'm in a super different place just because I was trying to look for the location of like a particular uh, store or what it used to be but um, Google couldn't help me out 
Um, I don't know if you guys can help me with that. If you guys know about the specific location of the free stores or the location that used to be in San Francisco, please let me know in the comments. I could not find it for the life of me. All these services and institutions were specifically needed during the Summer of Love of 1967, which is a topic we're gonna talk to about next. Walking down this neighborhood, you will see multiple stores, murals, and many other things that commemorate the event that made this place so famous. The Summer of Love of 1967. I'm sure you've heard about this event one way or another because shows and movies still reference that event till this day. That event began way before the summer though with another event called the Human Being which would set the base for what would become the Summer of Love. That event was sort of like a huge community party used to promote the hippie values as well as reaching a higher level of consciousness. Of course, through the use of drugs, sex, and music. But community leaders at the time got together and created the Council for the Summer of Love with hopes to create an event that would be even bigger and better. Currently we're here at the Panhandle which is a skinny section of the Golden Gate Park that stretches on the top along the uh, Hayden Ashbury district. This is where the Summer of Love concert happened. Yes, with all those famous singers and bands like Janis Joplin, The Grateful Dead, Jimi Hendrix, and many others that made this community even more famous than what it already was. Imagine being part of that wild event and like this whole place is full of people, everyone is like tripping out on something and everyone is like jumping and dancing and everything. I think it would have been really interesting to see that in person. Unfortunately, there is such thing as too much of a good thing. And in the end, the social experiment that has started a few years back had failed. Some of the ideals that characterized this event went completely out of control. There was overcrowding, homelessness, and a drug and STD epidemic. The community and its leaders knew that things had to change, so they went on the completely opposite direction. By the mid-1970s, there was a complete regeneration to the community, and by the 1980s, the community was almost completely gentrified. Today, you can find many thrift stores and vintage shops that help remind this community of the good old days. There is also a fair that is hosted every year with efforts to preserve the cultural and historical significance of this neighborhood. I have a short list of some places that I wanted to show you guys, so let's do that right now. first place we have to visit is the corner of Haight and Ashbury. This is also a Ben & Jerry's which makes this place a touristy attraction on its own. There's also a lot of stores that sell like souvenirs from the 1960s and whatnot, uh, tie-dye shirts and many other random things. Uh, this is one of the most famous ones but I've also seen multiple stores that look just like this one. So this place, the English translation is Goodview Park and I'm guessing you can tell why that is the case. This is a beautiful park and definitely a good way to get away from all the noise and everything like that that happens in the city or even in this neighborhood that is really close by. As you walk through Hayden Ashbury, 
you'll see different murals. The Mission District takes the credit for being the place for murals, but I think it's really cool to see them like all spread throughout the city. So let me show you a few of the ones that I found today. Throughout this district, you'll find like different fashion slash like, I don't know, hippie stores or whatever. And uh, it's like very interesting uh, fashion, you could say. I'll show you uh, what I mean. But uh, I've seen some of these all across uh, the district. I didn't think I was gonna find this. It was surprising to me. Another thing you will find here are smoke shops. This is just one of them, but one of many, trust me. There's also a lot of tattoo and piercing parlors in this neighborhood. A really famous location in Hayden Ashbury is Amoeba Music. I was lucky because today is Tuesday and today they have Tuesday night trivia. So what they do is the last 15 minutes uh, before closing, they start asking questions to kind of engage with the uh, shoppers. So it's pretty cool, pretty fun. Everyone there is really nice, really helpful. So definitely check this place out if you have a chance. I gotta confess something to you guys. Uh, right now I'm running frantically because it's 7.30 and apparently that's like closing time for a lot of the shops uh, right here. So I've tried to run to like Amoeba Music and all the other places uh, just to see if I could get some video of the inside. But right now, I don't know if I'm gonna get to any other places. Uh, we'll see, but um, just thought I'd let you know guys. Whenever you come here, make sure you come earlier because they start closing these places very soon. That over there, you guys this thing right here that is sutra tower that is really close to twin peaks which are two hills uh, really famous hills in san francisco with amazing views i actually did a video on them last week so if you guys are interested in checking that out i'll leave it in the description below in hayden ashbury you can actually find three homes that were owned by famous artists back in the day the first one is 710 ashbury street this one was owned by the grateful dead the next one is 635 ashbury this one was owned by janice joplin the last house i wanted to show you is jimmy hendrix's this one is now a vape slash smoke shop honestly you guys i'm not a big fan so i don't know much about these people but if you are a big fan it might be worthwhile to come take a picture and share that with your friends and with that you guys i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up hopefully you guys enjoyed today's adventure and if you did make sure you go ahead and like the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to go see more videos like this one always remember you guys to be kind have an open mind i'll see you next time